War crimes in international armed conflicts are serious breaches of international humanitarian law, which 1. entail individual criminal responsibility under conventional or customary international law, and 2. are committed in the context of an international armed conflict, mainly against protected persons or objects. Let's examine separately these two main elements. Firstly, only serious violations of international humanitarian law constitute war crimes. As stated by the ICTY, a violation is considered to be serious if it constitutes a breach of a rule protecting important values and the breach must involve grave consequences for the victim. It is important to observe in this regard that the notion of war crimes has evolved with the development of both customary and conventional humanitarian law. International prosecutions for violations of international humanitarian law began with the Nuremberg and Tokyo tribunals, which had jurisdictions over a limited number of war crimes. Thereafter, in 1949, when adopting the Geneva Conventions, state agreed to list a series of grave breaches of these conventions and to provide for an embryonic universal jurisdiction over such breaches, by stating that every state has a duty to prosecute or to extradite alleged perpetrators of such breaches. The 1977 Additional Protocol 1 also contained a provision listing numerous serious violations to these conventions, including certain violations of the rules governing the conduct of hostilities. It also imposes similar obligations on state to the ones contained in the Geneva Conventions. After the Cold War, the United Nations Security Council adopted the ICTY statute and reproduced the list of grave breaches contained in the four Geneva Conventions. It added, all the violations of the laws or custom of war drawn mainly from the 1977 Additional Protocol 1. In their jurisprudence, the ICTY judges further expanded this list by adding several other AHL violations that entail individual criminal responsibility under customary international law. This evolution culminated in the adoption in 1998 of the ICC statute and in particular of Article A2A and B, which enumerates several war crimes committed in international armed conflict that had previously been recognized in conventional and customary international law. These war crimes include not only offense perpetrated against protected individuals, prisoner of war, wounded and sick, or civilians, or against properties, but also crimes against humanitarian assistance and peacekeeping operations or prohibited methods of warfare. Second, in order to constitute a war crime, a criminal conduct must be committed in the context of an international armed conflict. We will not discuss here the notion of international armed conflict, which has already been addressed in previous videos. It suffices to recall that, in order to qualify as a war crime, a criminal conduct must be closely related to the hostilities. This means, according to Professor Cassese, that the crime must have been perpetrated against persons who do not take part in the hostilities or who no longer take part in such hostilities. And it must have been carried out with a view to somehow contributing to attaining the ultimate goals of a military campaign or, at a minimum, in unison, with the military campaign. Such a link between the criminal conduct and an international armed conflict serves to distinguish between war crimes and ordinary criminal conduct committed during but unrelated to an armed conflict. That said, it should not be that difficult to prove the existence of this link in the context 
of an international armed conflict where the categories of protected persons are rather easy to identify and where it is relatively rare for offenses to be committed by civilians belonging to one party against enemy combatants or enemy civilians. It is important to emphasize that, according to the jurisprudence of international courts and tribunals, war crimes are violations committed either by members of the armed forces or by civilians against members of the armed forces, civilians or protected object of the adverse party. In other words, the international jurisprudence does not limit the commission of war crimes and to members of the armed forces, but rather indicates the acts that are criminal when committed by any person.